Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the third session for introduction to Japanese language and culture via the University of Reddit. Uh, hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving tomorrow. Um, it's actually Thanksgiving Day here in Japan where I am, so happy Thanksgiving to me. Um, are we all clear? On, uh, can you guys let me know in chat if we're all, uh, if this is broadcasting clear? Are you guys receiving me? No. Okay, great. Um, so I just want to do a little bit of uh, administrative stuff first here. Um, I figured out, uh, for those of you that were in the last session or that saw the last Reddit post, had some connectivity issues. Uh, turns out that the wireless router here is just kind of um, not a very good one and it wasn't penetrating through the uh, media system that the computer was placed in. So uh, got that. Uh, uh, switched up. If you can tell, I'm in a, a different room now, so shouldn't have any connectivity issues. Should be coming through clear and should not disconnect. So that's the good news. Um, also, want to say that at, uh, as I had mentioned before, I was planning on changing uh, or closing the enrollment to the class before the beginning of this session, but I was thinking about it. And really, uh, all that's going to do is just block people from adding their name to the list on the University of Reddit web website, which I don't really care about and not, you know there's no way I can really stop anybody from watching the live live streaming videos or you know subscribing to the subreddit so I'm not really technically closing enrollment but I can just I all just say that if anybody wants to join the class after this date they're probably going to be a little bit left behind so um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time answering questions from people that that are clearly you know joining late so I also want to go over quickly uh, the chat rooms um, Decided to change the system a little bit so that uh, there's one general chat room open that everybody can kind of hang out in, and then there'll be other uh, chat rooms branched off of that, or not branched off of that, separate chat rooms. So you can ask uh, questions related to the, the topic and the material of the day. So um, we don't have a whole lot of people here. It looks like an IRC chat today, probably because the uh, the schedule has moved and because it's near Thanksgiving, no big deal. But you know, hopefully we'll get a little bit better turnout in future classes and once uh, the schedule kind of gets gets rolling on a on a in a set way. And if that happens, if we get a lot of people, we can we can split up the chat rooms and I'll I'll provide further more detailed instructions on the subreddit. So look for that uh, and on the syllabus as well. So. Um, and also, chat room, you know, joining the chat is not required. It's just a recommendation in case you have questions and kind of so you can get back and forth with uh, with your classmates. And if I'm covering something you already know about, you can get in there and you know, talk about something else or whatever you want to do. So uh, it's not a requirement, though, obviously. So you know, feel free to, to just watch the videos if that's what you want to do. Also, um, had a comment on Reddit. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for commenting and sending me messages about what you'd like to see. You know, it's uh, really helps me realize things that the students need uh, that I haven't provided yet. Uh, for example, you know, people were, were saying that they wanted me to uh, live stream the chat or, or live stream the chat alongside the video so people can see what I'm talking about. I will try to reference uh, what I'm seeing in the chat room on real time. And I did kind of cover this in the last session, but I also want to say that I'm I'm going to be copying and pasting the chat log in the Google document, so you can look over that and see what classmates' questions had and, and how were they they were answered, and just kind of you know what the chat room is, what the feel of the chat room is like, and just kind of check it out. So uh, look for that on the Google documents. Look for that link on the subreddit. Uh, the office hours. I'm uh, working on getting those finalized and posting those to the subreddit, so you can uh, hopefully get with a, in a live session with a TA when when they are available. So also look for that on the subreddit. Uh, and, and the syllabus to be linked so you can fi find a, uh, an office hour to, to get with a TA on and get uh, some live feedback and lessons. Uh, again, some of these TAs I um, you know, I don't have any experience with, so if they don't show up to their office hours, um, you know, I'm not guaranteeing anything. So hopefully they've all been really great so far, but you know, again, I'm not guaranteeing anything. So uh, also we're we're Sure, they're going to be publishing the useful links list, which is going to have a, a large list of links to learn Japanese, learn Japanese culture, communicate with Japanese people, um, you know, look at pictures of Japan, whatever you whatever you want. 
it's going to be a pretty exhaustive list, hopefully. And I invite you to, uh, we're going to post a link in the subreddit. I invite you to comment in that thread to add your own links. We're always looking for new uh, great websites. And you know, we'll, we'll consider any submission to, to add to the list. Um, so, you know, we'll, it's hopefully going to be one of the most exhaustive lists on the internet. There is one website that I think lists a bunch of links, but all of them, a lot of them are dead links and it hasn't been updated in a while. So, uh, we'll try to give you the highest quality stuff on there. Also, I just want to say real quick that, um, I haven't really mentioned this yet, but I, I've decided I'm going to start, there's probably a good idea to make a vocab list for each, uh, each lesson. So some of the words and phrases that I go over are going to be, um, added to this list, um, that's kind of, kind of an obvious thing that we should be doing, I think, so I just I hadn't really thought of that yet. Probably starting to notice that that's happening a lot, where I'm just notice, or realizing things that need to be changed, kind of tweaked a little bit, added, so again, that's to be expected, this is the first time, so uh, look for a link to that Google document as well on the subreddit, there's going to be a lot of links this week on, on the subreddit to very important information, so... Um, that's kind of the end of the ad, uh, administrative stuff today, so go ahead and get into into the Japanese. Uh, wanted to also let you know I'm already making another change too, and what I want to do is just kind of at the beginning of every class, just give you what I'm going to call a trip tip or just a tip about going to Japan, something a short little cultural thing. So it's not not really language. Uh, we'll include vocabulary words to add to the list, but just something. You know, a little bit of advice I think that would be helpful for you if you ever visit Japan or if you're going to be visiting Japan shortly. So, uh, today's trip tip is just about shoes, and the word for Japanese shoe, or the word for shoes in Japanese is kutsu, kutsu, and uh, k-u-t-s-u. So that'll be added to the vocabulary list with the kanji and the hiragana. You can check that out later. But uh, one thing that you, you will probably notice about uh, Japanese buildings or homes, especially homes, is that when you enter them, you will be probably taking off your shoes a lot. So if you are taking a trip to Japan or moving to Japan or whatever, bring a pair of shoes that you can slip on and off very easily. Um, you don't want to be sitting there on the ground tying your shoes, untying and tying your shoes while everybody else is already walking out the door and kind of waiting for you. So um, my recommendation, again, is that bring shoes that you can kind of slip on and off easily as you will be taking off your shoes a lot in Japan, especially if you're visiting, visiting people's homes. Uh, if you are visiting, you know, even, even some hotels and, you know, sports, you know, major venues, restaurants, um, commonly restaurants, especially traditional restaurants, basically any that, anywhere that's traditional, you can expect to take off your shoes either upon entering the building or uh, entering a certain room. So, uh, that place, when you enter a building or a home, and there, there's usually a little, a little specific room for the entryway, and that's where you take off your shoes and, and you know, store your shoes. And that's called the gen-kan, gen-kan, uh, another vocabulary word for this little trip tip. Um, so kind of look for that. You know, maybe you can get online and look for pictures of the gen-kan. Um, so you can kind of get an idea what that like that's like. It's just a small area. Also, a lot of times after you take off your shoes in Japan, there might be some slippers nearby that you can put on. So expect that, and just kind of you know just kind of go with the flow and watch what other people are doing. If everybody else is putting on the slippers, go ahead and do it. Uh, if not, you can skip over it. Sometimes there might not even be slippers. Also, if you're kind of a tall American like I am, uh, over six feet, then expect the slippers to be really small and uncomfortable, and uh, for your heel to be hanging out of them. So usually they're like cheap little plastic things, so uh, they're not very comfortable anyway, but, um, you know, just kind of be ready for that. So um, obviously the reason, well, the, re the reason why, you know, people, Japanese people take off their shoes is for cleanliness. And, you know, like I talked about in the last lesson, the traditional Japanese tatami mats are woven mats that, uh, you know, if they get little chunks of dirt or, or pebbles in them, it's very hard to clean. And obviously if they get mud streaks on them or something like that, it's, it's extremely hard to clean as well. So the, uh, you know, the, the importance of cleanliness in Japanese culture is, is pervasive, and you'll see that all over the place. Purity uh, is a big thing, and, um, you know, that's just another part of that. And so 
again, it's also another just another great example of Japanese mixing old with new. You know, you can enter, uh, you know, state of the art hotel or brand new home or whatever, and you know, you're going to be taking off your shoes, you know, following a very old Japanese custom. So, uh, just remember that it is it is very uh, taboo to enter someone's home with shoes on and it's a big no-no. So please be careful and mind yourself when entering places to take off your shoes if, if that's kind of what everybody's doing, especially if it's someone's home. Because you don't want to be tracking in dirt. I can tell you that I've adopted the practice in my own home and I really feel awkward even going into American people's homes now with my shoes on. I feel like I'm getting everything dirty. So uh, it makes your own home very very clean. It has a much cleaner feel to it. I don't want my daughter you know, crawling and falling and walking rolling around on uh, on stuff that I've tracked in from like public urinals and stuff like that. If you think about it, it's pretty gross wearing shoes where you're where you're sitting and walking around in. So or where you're living in. So it's a uh, it's a great habit. It's a great a great custom. I think you'll see that a lot with a lot of Japanese customs. It's like why don't why don't we do that more in America? Well, um, I can tell you that I do it and I love it. So maybe give it a shot. So. Um, you know, moving on to I get that's the end of the the trip trip tip for today. Sorry, that's kind of cheesy, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, let's see how uh, how we're doing with viewers here. All right, we got about 20 viewers, so not too bad. Looks like we're we're going to be hovering between about 20 and 50 viewers for each session. So um, let's see. So moving on to uh, the language. We left off last time. Uh, finishing the basic Japanese phonetic system. And I say basic because there is uh, a pretty hefty amount more to the phonetic sound system of Japanese. And um, let's go ahead and go into the Google document that we used last time so uh, we can get started with, with the rest of the Japanese sounds. So, excuse me, a little bit of technical difficulty, and all right, here we go. So, uh, you can see here that, assuming that, that this transferred the screen properly and you guys are looking what I'm looking at, let me know in chat if, if otherwise, but uh, I changed this up a little bit. I just added a little bit of color. I know this is probably not the most, or not the easiest document to look at, but uh, <laughs> was it loud? Someone's, I think, joking about how loud the mouse click was in the chat. So I uh, changed it up a little bit, but essentially the same. Now, I want you to also pay attention or notice that at the bottom here, I added sheets to the spreadsheet. So there's three sheets now, um, this first one being the one we covered last week. So I just want to quickly review this. Uh, <laughs> the click of Thunder. All right. Quickly want to review the. Uh, Let's see. Okay, I'll grab my my um, external mouse here and use that. So the clicking isn't so loud. Sorry about that. I want to review this uh, the basic phonetic system real quick here. So if you want to just repeat after me, uh, if you're not comfortable with it, that's great. Otherwise, you can just listen to me. So let's go ahead and start. Ah, e, u, e, o, ka, ki. Ku, ke, ko, sa, chi, tu, se, so, ka, chi, su, te, to, na, ni, nu. Ne, no, ha, hi, hu, he, ho, ma, mi, mu, me, mo, ya, yu, yo. Da, li, du, de, ro, wa, wo, mm. 
Okay, so uh, yes, um, somebody posted the link to the, doc, the Google document in the IRC chat, so people can look at it just you know, on the internet as opposed to on the on the stream. Looks like there's going to be a little bit of delay, so uh, while I'm highlighting, you will be able to see me highlighting them live either in the document or on the stream. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of delay in the stream, so if you're on the document, the sounds won't correlate to what I'm saying. So this isn't really going to be a big issue because I'm not going to be doing this every lesson or anything, just kind of the first few lessons, but... Um, you know, it's, uh, well, it is what it is. You, use whichever one you like. If you want to have this up before before the class starts, maybe I can start posting the links to the Google documents that I'm going to be using before the class, so you can kind of look at those uh, a little bit beforehand. Uh, this is great, you know, getting some feedback during the class of, of things we can, we can do better, so. Um, also, I just want to say, you know, I, I know that I said that your homework was to familiarize yourself with this and memorize this. That's what I want you to do. That's what I want your goal to be, to, to have the Japanese sound system so we can start learning vocabulary and you'll know how to say the vocabulary. But, you know, again, it's just one of those things where the faster you learn it, the better it is for you. It's not necessarily going to mean you cannot understand what I'm going to be covering in the next few lessons. But, uh, you know, again, try to learn it as fast as possible, but it's not absolutely required. You're not going to be totally lost if you don't. So just, just try to learn it as fast as you can. Um, hopefully you have learned it because we're going to be moving on to this a uh, set of second sounds, which um, may look a little bit daunting at first, but I want to show you. It's just kind of uh, it's just kind of extensions or um, you know different versions of of the sounds that you've already learned. So if you look at this top row here, um, well, you know what? I think I'm gonna actually use the third one to start off with. So if you look at if you look at these sounds we already learned kaki kukeko here, this line, uh, you'll see right two lines below it. Uh, you're just adding these two lines onto the the Japanese character. You're just adding these two lines and it's changing it from a a non voice to a voice sound. So from a ka to a ga. So it's not a whole it's not a whole, it's not very different as you can see. It's still a pretty easy pronunciation going from English. So um, you know, you're just you're just changing the k to a g, and that just runs across the board here. So, ka ki ku ke ko becomes ga gi gu ge go, and you can see that on the Japanese letters, you're just adding the two lines. Uh, now, so go ahead and just if you want to repeat after me, I'm going to say this line: ga, gi, gu, ge, go. Going back to this uh, other chart, which is a little bit easier to, to look at. Um, so you can see the line here, ga, gi, gu, ge, go. The next line here um, is the S changes to a, a Z. And again, if you remember, the the uh, the C sound is actually a she sound. It's a little bit irregular. And that's also it's also irregular uh, when when the sound becomes voice. So instead of a Z, it's a J sound, a G. Um, so, za, G, zu, ze, zo. Again, za, G, zu, ze, zo. Again, this is the S line voiced, which makes it a Z. Uh, moving on to the, the T line voiced, becomes a D, and there are two irregulars on this one, so sorry for this. Seems a little bit daunting with these irregulars, but um, it's you know it's it's not too much to learn. Just just kind of stick at it, and, and you'll get it. Um, so yeah, the ta changes to a d with the voice mark. Uh, so da, and these are well, these irregular ones are g. It's actually pronounced the same as this g. It's only written differently. And this seems a little bit strange, but uh, the pronunciation is exactly the same, just depending on the word, phonetically written, it can, it'll use a different character depending on the word. So, uh, same, same with this. It's actually uh, a different character, but pronounced exactly the same. So, that's one good thing is you're just repeating sounds here. So, da, g, z, de, do. You will notice, too, that this g and z are, are kind of uh, uncommon. You'll see them around every once in a while, but they're not really commonly used letters like the rest of these. So, da, 
i, z, d, do. Uh, the next line here is the ha line, and you'll notice that the ha line has two changes, uh, the only one with two. And you'll see that, like the other ones, it has the two lines here. Uh, these are called dakten. The two lines are called dakten. Daku, ten. Uh, that'll be on the vocab list. So it also has a han daku ten, and it's the only letter to have the han daku ten. It's a little circle. The daku ten changes the voice sound to a b, a h to a b, so from ha to ba. And then the Han Dakuten changes it to a P. So from Ha to Pa. So Ha, Ba, Pa. So this line is Ba, Bi, Bu, Be, Bo. Ba, Bi, Bu, Be, Bo. Next is the P line, which is Pa, P, And that's it. That's the end of the, uh, the voice changing to uh, characters to a voice character. So, you know, it's not a whole lot, and you'll see that um, it's really not that hard to memorize. It's, again, similar to the characters that you've already learned and or the sounds that you've already learned. And uh, it's also not very hard to, to transition from English to this. I also want to point out that when you're typing these uh, at, with the Japanese keyboard, this is not used to be a reference chart for how to type these in and get the results, re resulting Japanese character. This is uh, solely for um, pronunciation, so you can read it as an English, a native English reader. So there will be a separate chart uh, published which has uh, directions on or what letters to type to bring these characters up with the Japanese keyboard. I haven't really found that. I haven't really searched for it, but I haven't really glaringly found it anywhere uh, on the internet with instructions on how to do that. I'm sure it's somewhere, but uh, I'm going to make make a chart for that later. So again, this is just for pronunciation, not for typing. So moving on to the next type and the last type of Japanese sounds. Uh, this list may look a little bit large, but I want to show you that it's really it's pretty easy to learn. Um, a lot of kind of small variations on something, just a very similar characteristic. So what you'll see here is uh, these are called yo-on or diphthongs. And uh, yo-on, that, that will be a, another uh, word on the vocabulary list. But what, what you really want to immediately look at is that all of these characters are just the, the E line. So on this original one, this line, the E line, it's going to be these characters here with one of the ya sounds connected to them. So either ya, you, or yo connected to an e sound. So ki, ya would be kya. Ki, you, q. Ki, yo, kyo. Okay, so going back, you'll see that the ki, the, the ya's, or the ya, you, yo's written here in the Japanese alphabet. Uh, even though we're just learning the sounds, I want to point out that they're a little, they're small, and they're supposed to be that way. That's how they're typed. That's how they're written. Uh, so when when they're set up like this, it's not ki ya. You can write ki ya, but this is kya. It's one sound. So k y a kya. And you can see that again. It's just ki, gi, shi, ji, chi, g, uh, z, ni, he, b. They're all the e sounds of, of uh, the original alpha or the original phonetic sounds. So. Uh, are you are you guys? I'm getting some comments about maybe the, the sound cutting in and out. Are we good? Are we good here? Can you guys hear me clearly? Waiting for the delay on the chat here. Okay. 
Um, so, just want to go over these real quick here. So, kya, q, kyo. You'll see that this becomes very repetitive and pretty easy, uh, pretty predictable. Ya, you. Ya, you, yo. Sha, shu, sho. Sha, shu, sho. Ja, ju, jo. Ja, ju, jo. Cha, chu. Cho. Cha. Chu. Cho. Again, this is uh, these characters here, the G and the G, G are written differently, but they're pronounced the same. So here with the Ya and Yu Yo, they're going to be pronounced the same as well. Ja. Ju. Jo. Ja. Ju. Jo. Nya, nyu, nyo. Nya, nyu, nyo. Kya, kyu, kyo. Kya, kyu, kyo. Ya, yu, yo. Ya, you, yo. Ya, q, yo. Ya, q, yo. Ya, you, yo. Ya, you, yo. Last line here is ya, you. Yo. Ya. You. Yo. Okay, so uh, that's all of them. It's, again, gets pretty repetitive. And, you know, again, this isn't something that you absolutely need to memorize right away. I mean, it would be good if you did, but really just to know that they're there is, is what you need to know. Just to know that these sounds exist. Um, and, you know, you'll pick it up kind of along the way, I think. Um, these ones up here are probably more important to learn because uh, they are actual, well, you know, they're, they're just kind of, they're, they're probably more important to, to memorize and learn individually, kind of like the actual phonetic alphabet. But, you know, again, just if you're not able to memorize these before the next session, not really a big deal. Just try as hard as you can. And, uh, again, just try to go through them and be able to pronounce them. Um, just the ability to say them like a Japanese person would, uh, is really the most important thing. And there's going to be a link in the useful links where you can go to a website and click on each one of these, and they'll say them for you. So uh, also, obviously, you can watch this video again, and I'm going to post another video on YouTube like I did with the last one, going through each one individually, a video solely for that purpose. So you don't have to go through this whole lesson to find it. So... Um, and again, also on this Google document here that you all already have access to, and there's a link to in the subreddit, um, they're uh, list, all listed here. The entirety of everything is listed here. It's um, kind of hard to read, I think. I'm not really sure. Maybe you guys can give me some feedback later on this, but I will try to redo this. And really, the reason why this is so big, the characters are so big, is so you can see it on the stream clearly. I'll probably resize this after the class and make it a little bit more manageable. Uh, I think it'll be better if you can see the, all the whole chart just kind of on one screen without scrolling around and stuff. Obviously, if, uh, if you Google search Japanese alphabet or full Japanese alphabet, uh, Google pic picture search that, you're going to come up with some professionally done charts that are going to look a lot better than this. So um, definitely don't want to discourage you from doing that. Feel free to you know, go use other sources to get a better looking chart. This is just you know for, for the class here. So. Um, going back to uh, get back to the video here um, 
So we are about halfway. I want to go ahead and just take a, a little short break and um, go into the chat room uh, so that way you guys can ask any questions. And I'll just kind of keep an eye on it and try to answer the questions in real time here uh, via the stream. So uh, I did see a question about the Japanese keyboard. Um, the next session or the next half of this today's lesson is about resources and that's going to include uh, how to use the, the online dictionary that I like and it's going to use or be how to use the Japanese keyboard the basics of how to use the Japanese keyboard and how to use Dikai Chan or Dikai Kun, the Chrome, uh, Chrome or Firefox extensions uh, on how to use Jap uh, Japanese dictionary real time on, on websites so you probably want to go ahead and um, open up tangorin.com and go ahead and turn Rikai Chan, Rikai Kun on. And also um, go ahead and activate your Japanese keyboard or at least just kind of get in that mode because that's what we're going to be doing next. So you want to uh, kind of get ready for that. So thanks, thanks Spencer, for posting that link there. Um, that's the, uh, the dictionary that I recommend. Obviously, there's, there's a number of dictionaries, but... Um, that's the one that I like. I think it's kind of got I got a modern feel to it, and I think uh, you know, the other ones are kind of they're kind of bland. So, uh, and also I'll obviously go over you know some of the reasons why I like to use it. So it doesn't look like there's really any questions, which is great. Uh, I guess. Oh, wait, there are questions. I'm looking at the wrong chat room here. So it looks like the TAs are kind of taking care of it. Um, Good. Everything looks like the chat room is working good. So, uh, you know, it doesn't look like there's there's a whole lot whole lot of questions. So I'll just kind of continue here, um, as long as that's good with everybody. <laughs> uh, also, I just want to mention really quickly that not really technically a Japanese sound. There's no letter for it, um, but there are going to be double vowels, so like I or O or A, so A E O U, um, I E, things like that. There will be you will run into a lot of times where there's double vowels, and also it'll be repeated vowels like O or U. Um, so just keep in mind that those sounds do exist as well, and. Uh, you know, there aren't there isn't any phonetic letter form. It's just writing the vowel, the two phonetic uh, or the two letters for the two vowels right next to each other. Um, that's probably one of the hardest things to understand about in Japanese speakers is the O or when when a word does does or doesn't have it's just an O or an O. So where it's an elongated vowel or it's not an elongated vowel. And I also want to mention that in the katakana alphabet, which is the third alphabet for imported foreign words. There are a few more sounds that exist in the Japanese language, but um, they were made for foreign sounds. So they're not—they're Japanese sounds, but they're not really Japanese sounds. So I'm not covering them yet. I will at a later time. They're really not necessary to know at this time. And we're wrapping this course, and we're where everybody's levels at. And we will go over it in the near future, but for right now, it's, it's definitely not necessary. But again, just be aware that there are a few more sounds that exist out there uh, to describe or to pronounce foreign words, but um, it's still basically within the Japanese sound system and you're using uh, the Japanese Japanese alphabet, but um, so you know it's not, it's not going to tr sound truly like some foreign words. You know, they, they say them in a Japanese way, so um, once again just another example of Japanese people adopting, or uh, Japan adopting foreign things and making them Japanese. Um, so just be aware that those are out there and we will go over those in the future, so if you see some, some weird Japanese sounds or hear some Japanese sounds or some Japanese katakana that we didn't go over, just know that uh, we will we will be going over them and, and don't freak out or anything. So, uh, so yeah, I just want to move on now to um, going over the how to use very important, very, very important uh, online resources. So... This may be a point where some people start to lose, uh, kind of lose me a little bit and fall behind. So if you start seeing seeing words that you don't 
totally understand or are hearing words or vocabulary words or you know things like that that you don't understand then don't worry again that's just kind of me starting to do this thing where I'm going to include stuff for uh, you know beginner to intermediate level students along with beginner level students so don't be scared we're just uh, we're just going to go over some of the very important you know free online resources that that are going to be uh, extremely important for this class so the first one is the dictionary and uh, I'm going to go ahead and go over to uh, to the screen share of the dictionary website uh, again tangodin.com and let me make sure here okay should be going over shortly here we go Okay, so here we are. Um, this isn't normally what it looks like. I zoomed in a lot again, so you can see uh, see it on the screen. This is. Uh, let me know if it's not clear. But um, so what we have here is is again the dictionary the online dictionary that I like to use. Uh, pronounced Congo Dean. You can see here um, that it's. Uh, the kanji for tango tango and I think that's just a made-up word that, that whoever made this website did. Um, I have an account here on this website, and I would recommend that you make one because once you make an account, uh, you can make a, make vocabulary lists, and um, so when you look a word up, and you're that you're inevitably inevitably going to forget. Um, you know, you have it saved, and you can make folders and stuff so that, uh, you know, so that you can classify your vocabulary words based off of whatever. And I'll probably be making class vocabulary lists for each session on this website so that uh, you can access those publicly. And you can, uh, you know, you can you can import those in your own vocabulary lists uh, to study them. So. But you know, there's a lot. There's a ton of websites out there that where you can make vocabulary lists, and you can also make flashcards. So, you know, feel free to find whatever dictionary you like, whatever, um, you know, whatever vocabulary list making system you like, or whatever flashcard system you like. We're gonna try to be again posting those links on uh, on the website, uh, so you can you can find you know you can search through the ones that we've found and. and pick the one that you like but again this is kind of the one that I like just because of its basic system and so yeah let's just kind of dive in this uh, you know what you'll see here right here obviously it's just a search function so you can type in here um, a word that you want to know so uh, let's go ahead and just type in geez I don't know how about uh, tango so the first word in, in the dictionary name tango now in this search you can type in like I'm doing here uh, in the, the American alphabet with the Japanese name, you can also type in uh, an, an American word or an English word to get the translation, um, or you can type in the Japanese with the Japanese script to look it up that way. So I'm just going to go and type in English Tango, or type in English characters Tango, and you'll see right away what comes up as results, obviously, and. Uh, so the first result is not what we were looking for. It's tango written in katakana, which is the word for tango. As I said before, katakana is used for foreign words imported. Tango is obviously not a Japanese dance, so it's written in katakana. Now, what we were looking for is uh, the second here, second one here, which is tango, and that means word, so or vocabulary. Um, now, you'll see under the results that. Uh, you know, it's going to have varying definitions, varying translations, um, what kind of term it is, and then some example sentences. Now, it's also going to have up here kind of a description of uh, the of the grammatical type of word it is. And there is a website that this this dictionary, most online Japanese dictionaries draw from the same uh, Japanese electronic dictionary project. There's, we're going to have a link to that in the, in the links, and in, in that link on that website will be uh, a reference chart for 
all of the different ways that words are classified. Like, obviously, you know what a noun is, hopefully, but, you know, there's going to be some in there that are Japanese-specific that you will have to kind of study up on and learn what they're talking about in order to figure out what the word, what part of speech the word is. Um, so, right here is a button to add it to your vocabulary. Uh, so, take note of that. What you can do, obviously, here with the kanji is you can click on individual kanji, uh, and it'll expand the kanji and show you that the individual kanji is onyomi and kunyomi, and uh, give you the individual kanji's definition, as well as some very important information here, what radical it uses, how many strokes, what elements are in it, um, if there are any variations or older versions of the kanji, how it's pronounced in Chinese, how it's pronounced in written in Korean, um, and what grade it is on the Joyo level, and also what level it is on the JL, Japanese language proficiency test. So, as you can see, I might have just blown by and lost a lot of you on that, but hopefully, uh, some of you got some something out of that little description. Also, obviously, when you expand that, it's going to give you some example compounds. Um, you know, using the on, onyomi and kunyomi, and uh, you can also get a list of codes, so, you know, Unicode, Skip, all these different codes to look it up, all these different dictionary numbers for all the different published dictionaries. Um, you can find more words containing that kanji, beginning with that kanji, or ending with that kanji. You can also just do that search on your own um, by typing in the kanji in the search field and then putting an asterisk by it which this Japanese keyboard, I remember the error that. So that's going to search for words beginning with that kanji. Uh, if you click on that link on what we're just looking at, that's, it'll just automatically do that for you. But, um, you know, there's a lot of features on this, on this uh, website that I really like, and you can play around with it, obviously. Now, down here, or actually, next I want you to just look up at these tabs here. If you're searching for something uh, in general, if you have the general tab highlighted and you search for something, it will just search the entire dictionary for that for that word. Now, if you just want to look for kanji, obviously click the kanji tab. Just want to look for that word used in examples, that that uh, sound in names or something specialized or maybe classical Japanese. Obviously, you just click on that tab if you want to search for that thing specifically. Now, you can also kind of customize down here how you want your Japanese to be displayed. So um, if you see here, when I unclick that and click that, the word changes up here from Japanese script to English script. So it's going to change from Japanese to English. This is going to tick off. If you look right above the word uh, tango, there's a little, there's the furigana, which is the, uh, the small Japanese script written right above it. So um, you can you can take that on or off. Uh, you can highlight or unhighlight the word, take off the sentences, um, and show the translation. So you can kind of customize it however you want. And those settings will obviously stay once you've logged in, so you can customize it how you want. Um, now, the last thing, um, well, maybe the last thing I want to talk about here is the multi-radical search, which I feel like is one of the best functions of this this dictionary, and it's extremely useful. And I don't know, I'm sure there's probably some other dictionaries that have this function, but I haven't, I haven't really found any or tried to find any because this one's just so useful. So if you know anything about kanji, you know that, you know, if you hear, if you see a kanji like on TV or, you know, uh, in a book or in a magazine or whatever, um, you know, unless you know how to kind of pronounce it or maybe another kanji that it's paired with, it's really hard to go online and find that kanji. Um, so unless you know how to use this system. And uh, what's, what this system is, is you can search by basically um, a component of the character. And so let's go ahead and find tang, the tangorin word, which is um, the one we just looked up. So, or, or tango. And so what you want to do like, is, let's look up go, tango, the second part of Tango is Google, and it's language, and so you know that the left part of it, well, here, let's see. So the left part of it here uh, is this radical, and then 
So you just highlight that radical. It's six strokes. These numbers are the count of strokes. Or I'm sorry, seven strokes. That, that, that radical right there. And it's also uh, this pattern of split left to right. So if you, if you just highlight those two, it's going to bring up uh, results of all the different characters that are split left to right and have that radical. In them. And you can obviously pick some more. Well, it looks like it's not showing up here, so we may have to uh, go get a little bit more detailed. And another another um, part of that character was the the kanji go or the number five, which is four strokes. And I think that's going to be in here listed. Here it is. So if we click on that, and then the last one was mouth. Here, three strokes. So if we click on those, it should bring up at the first. The first result is that, and it is right here. So brings us to this character, which is part of Tongo, and we might even see down here. Um, well, and so you can see if you ever want to know how to relook up a character on the elements here, these are the elements that I selected. And so, you know, when you look when you save a vocabulary word, you can look how how to relook it up at a later time if you lose it. But if we really looked hard, we could probably find the word tongo in, uh, in its examples. It's not listed here. I don't want to go into too much more detail. But that's how you use a multi-radical search. Extremely useful for looking up kanji that uh, you, don't, you don't know how to pronounce. So um, I you know, encourage you to kind of toy around with that. Um, you can really just um, really find almost any kanji on here. There are a few ways, difficult ones that don't have a lot of clear-cut radicals, but that's kind of more advanced stuff you don't have to worry about. So um, that's how you use that. Now, that's really enough, I think, for Tongo Dean. I encourage you to create an account again and, and start adding vocabulary words and start kind of playing around with this. Another great feature here, obviously, is it gives you the stroke order of each character so you can see how it's written. Um, just all around a really, really great dictionary. I use it all the time, just constantly. Whenever I'm in Japan in front of a computer, I always have it up so I can just look up words real quick that I need to that I need to translate. So, um, so moving on, the next uh, the next resource that I want to talk about is um, let me get back to my hangout here. Uh, the next one that I want to talk about is, let me make sure I covered everything for the dictionary. Yeah, okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is uh, Dikai-chan, or Dikai-kun. Now, um, if you, I'm going to go ahead and go over to uh, Yahoo, dot, Yahoo Japan, and um, that's, or just just to give you uh, just to show you kind of how to use it's pretty simple how to use this so um, give me a, oh I'm using the mouse again too sorry <laughs> okay so you can see here that on Yahoo Japan nice Japanese woman in a swimsuit very nice um, it's going. I, I'm not sure what this looks like on Firefox. I'm sorry, but on Google Chrome, uh, it's just a, a, an extension up here, and you just click it on or off. And uh, once it's on, you can pretty much just highlight any Japanese word, and it'll show you. It's kind of not working very well here, but come on, work, work, work. And. You highlight any Japanese word, and it'll just pop up with a little short definition or translation of the word. So, also, okay, here we go. Also, what it will do, which is really useful, um, will it'll highlight the word too. So, you can use that to copy and paste into your dictionary, which is extremely useful. So, just you know, Control C and a Control V, Control C, switch tabs, Control V, pop it into your dictionary, and you can save it as a vocabulary word. But obviously, you know. This, I mean, um, you can almost know nothing about Japanese and or know basic, like basic grammatical structure and use this Chrome extension or, uh, you know, browser extension to translate real time and kind of get the gist of like an article. So, um, you know, unfortunately, this isn't very useful when you're like on 
the the Japanese chat in Japanese chat rooms or Japanese, you know, where people are using very colloquial language online because, um, you know, this I believe this draws from the same Japanese online dictionary that the uh, Tangorin draws from. So it's not going to have like really colloquial online online terms and stuff like that. But uh, you know, if you're if you're looking, wanting to like count through a news article or a magazine article or some online article or or whatever, then this is extremely useful uh, to get through it. So, you know, you can just see here the title of this of this is um, a a lesser panda that baby that moves around too much or something like that, or if it's too surprised. So. To be surprised, um, lesser a lesser panda and a baby. So you can you can see that there's some there's some grammatical structure here that you know you would need to know to know exactly what the sentence is saying. But you can get the gist of it that it's just saying that there's a baby lesser panda that's surprised about something or something like that. So um, it's, again, an extremely useful tool for browsing online and um, learning Japanese. So, you know, I have the, I always have this enabled, um, you know, basically whenever I'm on the internet. So, again, don't forget to turn it off and on, obviously. <laughs> so, uh, the last the last resource I want to talk about here is um, the Japanese keyboard, and um, this this is obviously another extremely extremely important and extremely useful tool, and uh, just kind of want to go over briefly how it works and give you few little tips and tricks with it that I've learned. Um, you know, with all of these, the dictionary, Rikai Kun, Rikai Chan, and the Japanese dictionary, there's probably a lot of keyboard shortcuts and, and features and stuff that I haven't learned and that I don't know. So, you know, um, sorry, I'm not, I'm not going to give you like, I'm not a total expert on these, but just kind of giving you my tips and, you know, again, feel free to tinker with them, which I probably should do more, but, um, you know, tinker with them however you want, kind of figure out the best way for you to use them. But uh, in order to type in Japanese, let's just go back to my um, spreadsheet here. And so, well, you know what I need to be, are, can you guys see my, you can't see my desktop, right? No, you can't. So let's go ahead and go to my desktop, which the PC. Hopefully there isn't anything that's too. Whoa! <laughs> okay. So what you'll see here is. The language bar is obviously in the lower on the lower bar here. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you guys have this. I've already kind of figured that out, but um, oops, happened again. About that. Let's just go ahead and keep this open. Okay, so the language bar is on here now. If you see, this is actually a Japanese computer, so that's why it looks like this. It's going to be a little bit different. On um, <laughs> it's going to be a little, people are commenting on the on the tweaker mode that the the desktop you just did in chat. But, um, the reason why these boxes are around it here is because you haven't selected a field where you can type anything. So if that if you ever see that happening, that's what's going on there. You just need to click in a field like this um, where you can uh, you know you can actually type. So once you do that you'll see that those boxes clear up. Now again this is a Japanese computer so it's a little bit different but you know, essentially, you're going to be clicking on uh, this one. Doesn't have I don't think this one has the English keyboard installed. So, on the on your guys' computers, it's going to have you have, give you the ability to switch between English and Japanese. Now, an extremely useful tip for this uh, is to pre press Alt plus Shift. Um, Alt plus Shift is going to switch back and forth from English to Japanese. So. Extremely useful little uh, shortcut, keyboard shortcut for the Japanese English keyboard. Alt plus Shift, and uh, once you're in Japanese, you have these five selections, 
And again, these are in Japanese. They're going to be in English on your guys' probably, but uh, cancel is on the bottom is cancel, obviously. <laughs> Um, the bottom one here is actually so you can type in English. So you don't have to necessarily switch back and forth between the Japanese and English keyboard. You can just switch back and forth between this and whatever Japanese input method you're wanting to use. Uh, but this top, this top one is the one you're going to be using mainly here, hiragana. Um, and the other four or the other three are just different ways to type in short and long form in either uh, katakana. Or I think hiragana, but I really never use these, and I don't think you ever really will need to. You'll never need to, especially on a beginner level. You'll never need to. Really, what you want to do is just use. Um, oh, really? Somebody said they're in Japanese on, on English. Okay, I'll plus. Yeah, like I said, there's a lot of other tips and tricks you can use on these, so just play around with them, and um, you know, so you can use use keyboard shortcuts. I'm sure to switch between these, but. Basically, once you get to the hiragana here, um, you know you go into your field where you're typing, and you just use you just type on the keyboard like you would in English, but you just type the Japanese words, so like ah. And um, on I think on an English keyboard, it's going to come up come up with the letter A. Um, so yeah, it looks like different different operating systems, and I think there's also a Google language bar you can download. They're going to be a little bit different, but basically, you know, you just type the letter. Um, well, I guess, okay. So, yeah, you t let's do da, D-A. So, you type D and then A. And it comes up with uh, the Japanese character. If if you're typing, an incorrect, if you're typing it incorrectly, then uh, it's not going to come up with the Japanese character. It's going to, like, be a mix between Japanese and English. Now, um, let's go, let's, actually, let's do tangorin. So, ta, in the N sound is two N's. You have to hit N twice. Go, G O, D R I N, N N. So tango din. Now this is uh, the word we were just looking up. Or let's just do tango. I'm sorry, tango. The word we were just looking up that means word or vocabulary. Uh, that's how you write it in hiragana. Now, if you want to find out the kanji for this, then you hit spacebar and. Uh, as long as the word is underlined like it uh, like it is now, that means that you have the option of hitting spacebar and changing the kanji. Now, with this, um, if you hit the spacebar initially, it's just going to bring up the most common kanji, so or you know the most probable one that you're looking for. If that's what it is, you just press enter, and the line disappears. Now, at this point, you cannot press spacebar and edit it. You'll have to retype in the word if you want to change it again. So, tango spacebar. Now, if that's not the kanji you're looking for, yes, there is other tangos. You're going to press spacebar again, and you're going to come up with a different different list of the kanjis for tango. Uh, and also, you'll have the the option to write it in katakana here, the other phonetic alphabet. So um, that's how you you want you want to. It's very important to remember the spacebar function before the while the word is still underlined, so you can uh, choose what kanji you want. And, you know, you can you can sit there on uh, Facebook or chat and act like you know all these kanji really, and all you need to do is just know how to press the space bar and choose the right one. So, um, and you'll see here like that certain sounds in Japanese, certain letters will have a whole buttload of kanji. Like kyo has you know just almost a never-ending list of different kanji. A little bit kind of disheartening, but you know that's just the way it is. Um, there's certain sounds that have a lot, and certain sounds that have one or just one. So. Um, that's pretty much the gist of how you use the Japanese keyboard. Uh, you know, again, it just takes a little bit of time get, to get used to it, and um, takes a little bit of practice. But you know, it's extremely, extremely useful and extremely important for this class. Uh, you know, to be able to use that proficiently, along with obviously an online dictionary, and with a uh, um, with Nikai Kun and Nikai Chan. Those three resources right there, I mean, you can really, I mean, just pretty much go anywhere on the internet and understand almost anything. So being just a beginner level student, which is really amazing. I mean, when I started studying, it was paper dictionaries or you had to buy like a two or three, four hundred dollar electronic dictionary, which you can still buy and are still extremely useful, obviously for, um, you know, for portable purposes. But, you know, now uh, you guys should, should 
feel lucky. I feel like I'm an old geezer saying this, but you should feel lucky that you have access to these online dictionaries like this, man. Back when I was a student in high school and stuff, you know, it was all paper dictionaries, and you had to look up kanji. It took freaking forever. So, um, anyway, back to back to uh, back to back to the video here. We're pretty much gonna be wrapping up now. Um, we're running a few minutes over, so thanks for sticking around if you are. Uh, if you're having issues with using these resources, please utilize the subreddit and ask questions there. We're, we're here to help. I um, want to go ahead and uh, just assign the homework assignment for this session, which is three separate parts. Um, the first one is just obviously... Uh, start, you know, familiarizing yourself with the sound system that we went over and try to, you know, become comfortable with it and, you know, try to say a few words that you know in Japanese already that uh, using the sound system and remembering that, you know, each consonant vowel combination is an individual sound. Try not to run the words to, or the sounds together and, and, you know, try to make it sound, uh, you know, native. And uh, so try to familiarize yourself with that as much as possible and repeat those. Uh, the next part of the assignment is to uh, go to just some random Japanese website. I would recommend either you know searching for an article in Japanese on Wikipedia or maybe yahoo.co.jp. Japanese websites usually end in .jp or .co.jp. So try to find some random Japanese website or maybe not random, maybe some website that you know you're interested in for anime, anime or whatever and uh, use the resources that we've learned about today to maybe, you know, start making a vocabulary list or uh, start, you know, just doing a little bit of, you know, on-the-fly translating and familiarize yourself uh, with these resources that we went over. And I also want you, uh, the third part of the assignment, homework assignment, is I want you to uh, create a vocabulary list of five to ten Japanese words uh, obviously, also using the website that you're going to look at and the resources that you're looking at, and and submit those on Google Documents. I'll have a, a homework assignment one posted on Google Documents where you can submit your five vocabulary words. Um, and you know, you can either obviously make a vocabulary list on your own Word document or Google document, or you can create. I recommend you create a, a Tangodin dictionary account where you can uh, start, you know, making a, a vocabulary list that you'll be using for the rest of the, the time you study Japanese and. You know, you can always go back and access and share with people if you want to. So, again, make make five to ten uh, uh, vocabulary lists of five to ten Japanese words that you're interested in looking at learning or you, you just happen to stumble upon and uh, submit those to, to us so we can check them out. And, um, you know, obviously try to learn those and memorize those words along with the vocabulary words that are going to be provided uh, that were uh, introduced in this lesson today. So, um, see you. I think that's going to be pretty much it for today. Uh, sorry, we went a few minutes over, but uh, I hope I hope uh, the lesson was clear and the video and everything was clear. And um, I hope you know nobody got too confused or, or too uh, felt like I was going going too far ahead. But uh, we'll be in chat here for a few minutes afterwards if you want to hang out with us. And um, you know, please again look for look for the useful links on on the subreddit in the next few days and. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. Um, we'll see you next time. Sayonara.